It's time. Do the dance. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the celebrities who didn't enter the spotlight until later in life. My job is routine. I have virtually no social life and nothing interests me. My life has just become dull and boring. Number 10, Ricky Gervais. He's been such a prolific comedian for so long that it's hard to imagine him doing anything else. However, Ricky Gervais once had a very different career goal in mind. His original aspiration was music, which led to him creating a new wave duo called Siona Dancing. Although they didn't top the charts, they encapsulated the 80s perfectly. After that fell through, he exited the limelight for a few years before pivoting to writing and comedy. People think I'm embarrassed about how I look then. No. I'm embarrassed about how I look now. By the time The Office premiered in 2001, he was 40. From there, he flourished and has since created other programs and hosted several prestigious events. He's even maintained a good attitude about his humble beginnings and isn't afraid to crack a joke at his own expense. And people say, oh, if you, if you gave up beer and pizza, you'd live longer. But I only want to live longer to eat more pizza and drink more beer. <laughs> Number nine, Ellen Albertini Dow. Pursuing acting post-retirement is a feat that not many can pull off. However, Albertini Dow was too busy working as a teacher to make time for the silver screen. Now, please, take a bite so that I can watch you enjoy. That's my favourite part. Oh, OK. <laughs> Fittingly, she taught acting classes for several years before deciding to enter the business herself. She landed her first gig at 72, and she didn't stop there. By the time she took to the mic in 1998's The Wedding Singer, she was in her mid-80s. I said hip hop, I hip it to the hip it to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock to the bang bang boogie, they up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie the beat. She even appeared in several prolific television shows, such as Seinfeld. She had a love for the craft, and she continued to perform until her death in 2013, at 101 years old. She's the ultimate proof that age doesn't have to be a barrier in the entertainment industry. How are the lessons going? Well, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Yeah, she's starting to scare in less and less people when she sings. <laughs> oh, Robbie, you're so funny. Number eight, Stan Lee. Even the most accomplished man in comics had a humble beginning. He started out at a lower level position at Timely Comics as a young man. Uh oh. Somebody's been a bad lizard. He was halted in the 1940s when he joined the military and served in World War II. He did everything from fixing important equipment to writing manuals. While serving, he continued to write stories for Timely. Don't make me come down there, you punk. By the time Lee started shaping Marvel as we know it, he was just about to hit his 40th birthday. He entered the public sphere later in life and became the face of the company in his 50s. From that moment on, his public perception as an older man was sealed. His cameos in later Marvel films cemented that image for generations to come. Hey man, make love, not war. Number 7, Anthony Hopkins. He's been in the film business for so long that it's hard to believe he started so late. You use up your skin cream. And sometimes you wear a lead at all. But not today. He had always had a love for the arts. He got his start early on with the Royal National Theatre. However, those plays never truly broke out to a wider audience, leaving him in relative obscurity for years. Hopkins wouldn't see film success until 1980, when he was 43. Since then, he's taken on his most compelling work to date, from Silence of the Lambs to The Father. Both performances brought him the Academy Award for Best Actor, the latter making him the oldest man in history to win in that category. Despite his advanced age, he hasn't slowed down, and we couldn't be more grateful. What are you going to have? Small whiskey. Well, then I'll have the same. Two! Splendid! <laughs> Two small whiskeys coming up! Number six, Judy Dench. Many entertainers worry that when they get older, the good parts will stop being offered to them. The complete opposite happened to Judy Dench. 
She had her start in live drama, performing both plays and musicals. Everything changed in 1995, when she took on the role of M in the James Bond franchise. This picture's live. Unlike the American government, we prefer not to get our bad news from CNN. She was in her early 60s at the time, and she enchanted viewers with her effortlessly cool demeanor. The portrayal immediately launched her into superstar status, and she continued to play the director for two decades. I've just been reviewing Bond's tests. Seems you've passed by the skin of your teeth. You're back on active service. Although she exited the series in 2015, Dench didn't stop there. She continued to act well into her 80s and still has the ability to command an entire audience with just her presence. Before a cat will condescend to treat you as a trusted friend, some little token of esteem is needed like a dish of cream. Number 5. Helen Mirren well, I hope you're finding everything to make his lordship stay more comfortable. I hope we haven't forgotten anything. I can't believe you forget much, Mrs. Wilson. No, not much. Like many actors on this list, she got her start in theatre. Mirren first found slight fame on the stage, where she specialised in Shakespeare. She also lent her skills to a few filmed projects in the late 1960s as a younger woman. However, her breakout role came over a decade later, when she was already in her mid-30s. The toss between Bertel Church and George Clooney, I know which one I'd rather wake up looking at. Her star continued to grow as she branched out into television in the 90s and she hit a new stride in the new millennium. She won her first Academy Award in 2007 when she was 61. Since then, she has taken on countless different genres and even played one of the most memorable characters in 2023's Barbie, just short of her 80th birthday. Not stereotypical Barbie pretty. Note to the filmmakers, Margot Robbie is the wrong person to cast if you want to make this point. Number 4. B. Arthur Honey, I dreamt I gave birth to the most beautiful baby with an eight-foot stainless steel umbilical cord. <laughs> she lived a whole life before she even thought about getting in front of a camera. Arthur didn't start out in the arts. She joined the Marine Corps Women's Division and served during World War II. Following the war, she tried her hand as a medical technician. However, she quickly lost passion for that and pivoted to performing. Ooh, there is no fun in my life. Oh. Have you ever felt like you're stuck in a rut, going through the motions with, with no joy or pleasure or excitement? She was 49 when America first saw her as Maud in All in the Family. Her comedic prowess made them fall in love immediately. Her most lauded works soon followed, and she continued to make people laugh well into her 60s. She isn't the only golden girl to enter the limelight later in life. Co-star Estelle Getty didn't get her big break until she was 62. Sophia, your daughter is one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. Boy, you writers never stop using your imagination. <laughs> Number three, Patrick Stewart. Captain, what is your status? We are conducting energy output studies of the Macquarie Quasar. All systems normal, the ship is fully operational. While the roles he took on later were larger than life, they didn't start out that way. Stewart worked hard for years before ever being recognized. He worked in the theater and on television, taking small roles and building a name for himself. By the time he accepted the part of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, he was already middle-aged. While he had reservations about science fiction, it catapulted him into superstardom. From there, he dropped his qualms and took on another sci-fi project in the 2000s, X-Men. When I was a boy, I discovered I had the power to control people's minds, make them think or do whatever I wanted. When I was 17, I met a young man named Eric Lenscher. He too had an unusual power. He played the professor for over 20 years, and he still looks the same as the day he first started. His contemporary, Ian McKellen, has had a similar career arc, and they're both still thriving today. I'm looking for hope. I will bring you home, old friend. And I ask only one thing in return. Don't get in my way. Number two, Morgan Freeman. So how about it? Feel like living on the edge? Beautiful, isn't it? 
With his iconic voice becoming a staple of modern cinema, it's hard to believe he didn't reach the mainstream until his 50s. The first part of his adulthood was spent in the Air Force, where he served for four years. Freeman then became a dancer. While he did well there, he knew he wanted to branch out into acting as well. Yeah, these walls are funny. First you hate them, then you get used to them. He eventually found a role on The Electric Company, where he built up his reputation. He kept acting steadily until his work finally broke through to the general public. By the mid-1990s, Freeman was a household name. He's only become more sought after as he's gotten older and has continued to lend his voice and effortless charisma to various projects to this day. You did good, son. You changed the world. No, no, I didn't. Well, let's see. Spending time with your family, making them very happy. Gave that dog a home. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Maggie Smith. I suppose it's fun having a film star staying. There's always so little to talk about after the first flush of recognition. From day one, it was clear she was meant to be a star. She got her start young, taking to the stage to perform various plays. She quickly rose the ranks and became one of the most prolific performers, winning awards at a young age. She received accolades early on in her career when she won an Academy Award for 1969's The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. I fell deeply in love with Hugh in the last year of the war. But he fell on Flanders Field. Helen McPhee, are you thinking of doing a day's washing? No, Miss Brody. However, the characters she has taken on later in life have become what she's truly recognised for. Her work in the Harry Potter franchise alone has cemented her legacy across generations. She's proved that you can still teach an old dog new tricks, still taking on new movies, even as she's approaching her 90th birthday. Potter. Oh, this can't be good. Enjoying ourselves, are we? Well, I had a free period this morning, Professor. So I noticed. I would think you would want to fill it with potions. Which celebrity's younger self surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.